Hello everybody, this is Walking and Talking with Phoenix and today we're going to be talking about the Dove culture. I saw a news article recently, just online, apparently some guy was left behind at one of the more recent bush party events and he was in the bush without, I think without a shirt and only with his shorts on or something or short, short, shorts and a shirt, no shoes, whatever. He was there for about two days and totally lost out of his mind and apparently he tried some new drug for the first time and it kicked his ass and it left him kind of wallowing in the woods for a good portion of the weekend. So this round up in the newspaper, apparently this, this guy, this was a son of somebody who was special, you know, recognized abroad. So it got to the papers and there's been a lot of negative attention, a lot of heat on the Duke community and as a result of this, certain individuals within the community are stamping their feet in a slight outrage and very upset and very angry about you know this guy in particular coming to the Duff and not being able to handle this shit and because he fucked up now the community is probably going to have to pay for it and this is what I wanted to address this isn't the first time I've seen something like this go down I mean I started doofing and they call it doofing because when you're in the woods all you hear is doof 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 so I started doing that about when I was 18 I'm 26 now and for the last three years I've heavily moderated how often I go and I go about twice a year now just to dance see some old faces reconnect with nature and it's great for that you know because that's all it is it's the same thing you get in Northbridge but it's not you don't just get pisses and sluts and guys bouncing their egos around and violence you get some of that, but it's a lot more moderate in the Duff community because really, generally, it's just a group of wholesome people, tight-knit community, everyone knows each other, all ages, all backgrounds, all weekend, day, night, day, night, just dancing and chilling, and they've got stores, and you know, where they sell cool stuff that people make, and they have various you know, workshops for enlightenment or whatever. You know, and helping people develop their various skills and just their knowledge and awareness. And generally, they're, they're great to go to, you know. It's not the same judgment that you get everywhere else that you go. It's a very different atmosphere, one that promotes an open mind and exploration and progressive thinking and expression and creativity. And it's awesome, in general, you know. I think the Duff does get a lot of a bad rap because drugs generally do form part of the basis of the Duff community, and I'm talking about all over the world. Really, you could say it's hugs, drugs, and psychedelic trance, or hugs, drugs, and electronica, because now they play all kinds of music. But um, it does form an essential part of the baseline of the community, and I think people judge that. People that have their own opinions regards to that culture, and what people get up to, and what they do. Everyone's got their own take on it. So that's, that's to the pros, that's my support of the community. But that isn't to say that it's perfect. And that isn't to say it's without flaw. And that mistakes haven't happened along the way that do resemble the horrific things that go down in the cities. The stuff we try to get away from in the city when we go to the bush sometimes pops its head up there too. And that's unavoidable and this is the point of this talk is that it's inevitable. It's inevitable. If you get enough humans eh, together in a space, give them free reigns without limits, and let them do whatever they want to do on whatever they want to do it on, eventually shit's about to hit the fan. It's gonna hit the fan. And instead of dumping all of that when it does hit the fan onto the person's head who's stuffed up, it will probably make sense to apply more preventative measures in the first place and figure out ways to prevent it from happening again next time and you know to help these people out I mean you know I've always kind of equated it with these events to being like a lamp you know it's very bright it attracts moths and they get so attracted to this irresistible flame that they end up flying right into it and getting burnt up to their detriment and you know who's to say and is it fair to say well, that's your fault, buddy, that you got so close to the heat that you couldn't handle it and you burnt up because you, it's all your responsibility. I mean, the last time I checked, the fundamental aspect of any community is that everyone there is there to support each other. 
It's not like that scene in the beach where as soon as you know that guy gets his leg bitten by the shark and they don't want to be exposed, they don't want to know have people know where their beach is. So they carry this guy who's bleeding to death and crying in agony. They carry him and just dump him outside somewhere away from the group and then they go back to partying and laughing and dancing like everything's fine. That's not how communities roll, it's not how they work. You know, that's that's just ignorance right there and irresponsibility. I mean, you can't take credit for a party. If you host a party, a dupe event, you can't take credit for how spectacular it turned out, how great it was and all the good vibes if you're not ready to take responsibility for the negatives of the event and the accidents that happened and the downfalls. And I'm not saying that it's always the organizer's fault and that, you know, it, the fault doesn't land on the shoulders of those directly responsible in whatever incident or situation. Of course it varies with the context and what's going on. But generally speaking, if you go to any legalized event between walls in the city, there is liability for these things. If shit hits the fan, regardless of whose fault it is, the, the people hosting the event don't just go, oh, well, that's your fault, buddy, just sort out by yourself. But they actually have everything set up in a way as to be able to cater to people if they need help, to facilitate medical help if necessary, or to pay out, you know, to pay out insurance or whatever. You know, there's liability. They've got it covered. It's not about pointing the finger and being like a child and be like, well, I accept all the good stuff about the event, but shit happened and that's all your fault and I'm not ready to deal with it. I'm not, I don't want to deal with it. It's, it's just childish. You know, if, you, if you're going to do something, you do it properly or you don't do it at all. And I think, just like the analogy with the, with the lamp attracting moths and burning them, if you're inviting someone into an open space in the woods where they are free to do drugs of any kind, um, and you know, a lot of the time the people that are hosting these things and the people setting them up are the ones actually dealing, you know. And it's not for free anymore, at least not over here. There's like $30, $50 donations at the door. But if you don't pay the donation, you get turned away. Unless you're an attractive female, a drug dealer, somebody who's in the crowd, you know, or sometimes you can negotiate to help clean up or help out in some way, setting up and setting down the stages. And then you might be able to get in for free. But generally there is a fee. It doesn't matter how you try to guise it. If you get turned away because you can't pay, that's not donation based. You know, if you try to spoon off as donation based, that's just another form of ignorance and irresponsibility. And this is the thing, like they say, oh, three days in the woods for $50, can't complain. Try, try having a night out in town f for that long and, and spend more, uh, less money, you know? And there's a point, but the difference is, I could go camping anytime, anyway. It would cost me money to get down to the place, you know, and if I'm paying $50, I respect and I appreciate that you guys have taken the time and put in the energy to set up the stage and get all these DJs from all these other places, woo! Um, which is good for the culture, I guess. It's a bit wanky in my opinion. I used to do it just for the community. I didn't give a fuck if they had a new DJ come in from some interstate travel. I didn't give a shit. It wasn't about that. It wasn't about the hype of the culture for me. It was just about the community and connecting in a way that was affordable for all so that we could all be there consistently together instead of people going only sometimes because every time there's a new act and a new big show that's better than the last show and it ends up becoming more fragmented and broken the community does because it becomes more of a glamorized culture thing you know things change like that and anything small that starts off good ends up becoming great and then turns to shit and gets overpopulated over contrived over regulated too expensive in different ways and that happens to everything. I mean, it's still a great community, great things happen, great people to meet, great experiences, and it's worth the money. But the point is, if you're paying $50, even if, you know, fair enough, you get your acts, you know, and you get these, the stage set up, but sometimes you think, you look at the stage and you go, come on guys, really? I mean, I don't know, sometimes I like to say the effort put in isn't enough, but sometimes it seems there's no effort put in. Maybe it's just me. Like I said, I've missed out on a lot of events. This is an outdated perspective, perhaps, because I'm talking about various events that I've been to within the last three years. 
you know, and not many events, just very specific events. There wasn't much effort put into the setup, and it cost an armload. Not to mention these guys, like I said, half the time are distributing substances themselves and making a killing profit on that. So do they really need all that extra money at the door, really? And if they do demand that money at the door, the donation, I think just like any other place you'd find in the city, they should offer water, toilets, and food. You know, at least water and toilets. I mean, it's the bare essentials, especially if you have thousands sometimes, hundreds of people dancing on various drugs and drinking alcohol. If you can't cater to them with water, it's pretty, pretty basic, pretty fundamental. And you just expect them to take responsibility themselves then what if somebody doesn't take responsibility or they share their water or they lose their water or they underestimate they don't bring enough water and they end up dehydrating and getting really sick or even dying what that's just their fault that's not how these things work you cater to those people especially if you're charging a door entry that's why you charge so much money it's not just about the ego wank with oh the next fucking DJ to promote our culture which is cool but it's also about providing the essentials and having them covered and having liability that's why people pay more money in the weekend because they're paying for the security that is afforded and the convenience of having the essentials provided you know um, so you know this this whole thing with this thing happening in the newspaper I've seen worse things go down than what happened this weekend you know I've seen one guy lose his crap, absolutely, you know, I calmed him down and I tried to give warning and no one really listened and then later he ended up losing his shit and doing some really horrible things and hurting some people and just losing his mind because I don't think people really pay enough attention outside their own immediate circle and people only are too set on taking responsibility for themselves that they forget what it means to be a community and to be there for each other. And if shit happens, they just shrug it off and say it's not their responsibility and ignore it. Um, which really, that just rep repulses me. It's why I stopped going to this community events a while back. It's because even despite all the beautiful moments which unite us, which give color and depth and beauty to these events, I still find there's a lot of superficiality, like a clicky kind of thing going. And it's still very much on the surface, as much as a lot of people may preach about, you know, various enlightened ideas and sentiments and values and hold themselves to be hippies or shamans or angels or fairies or whatever, you know, children of love and light and peace, respect, plur. I find that all these sentiments and these values and all these things which are said don't necessarily, uh, aren't necessarily followed up in action and the talk isn't always walked. And at the end of the day, sometimes I think people just want to go in the, in the woods where there's no rules, no limit, and just take drugs and do what the fuck they want to do and party. And when shit eventually hits the fan, which is gonna happen, guys, if you get enough people in an open space, past 500 people, and you give them free reins and you give them drugs, and, you, and you're not even giving them water sometimes, shit will hit the fan. And you can't just ignore it when it does. That's part of the package. If you're hosting these events and shit hits the fan, I'm not saying that you've got to apply every preventative measure and it should never happen. These things are unavoidable. What I'm saying is when they do happen, because they are unavoidable, instead of whinging about it and blaming other people, you know, you should distribute the responsibility where it is due. And that includes you. If you're hosting these events, you gotta take credit for the bad, man, otherwise you can't take credit for the good. That's just double standards, that's hypocritical. You know what I mean? That's like saying, oh yeah, I made the cake, it's delicious, isn't it? Oh, the icing shit, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's not me, I, I have nothing to do with the icing. At the end of the day, the whole cake is yours. It's either shit or it's good or it's a bit of both. Either way, you own it. Um, and that's, that's basically it for me. That, you know, I've seen a lot of shit go down, I've seen things change over the years. It started off as a small community thing f where I live and the, the, the events I attended they ended up becoming over-popularized and they became something else. They became more of a trendy party thing. Parties in the bush. 
instead of intimate gatherings. It's a big difference. Not to say there's not still intimate moments and there's still gatherings within the parties, but there's a lot more of a party nature, people going just to get fucked up. And, you know, ever since crack really introduced itself and became a monolithic, you know, trend for people to start getting onto the shit, you know, instead of people uniting with joints and tripping together, which still happens, more often I started seeing years ago, you know, people hiding in their cars and segregating and separating, isolated into small groups, smoking away. And, you know, it doesn't really help promote the values that the Duff culture stands for. Peace, love, unity, respect. There is nothing peaceful or loving or uniting or respectful about crack. More so than there is evidence that goes against those values due to crack, you know? It causes a lot of shit. So I think that's caused some issues. And really, it's inevitable if you introduce just crack alone, not to mention LSD and ecstasy and DMT and whatever else. Uh, it's inevitable that, that it's gonna rain at some point and, and we're gonna face shit storms. And some people are gonna get covered in that shit, even if it wasn't their friend in particular that fucked up. You know, the fact of the matter is we're all sharing those skies out there and we're the ones developing those clouds. We're the ones developing the stage for this event to unfold on. We're the ones setting the clouds. And if it rains and some shit happens to fall, we all get wet alike. And we all got to work together and take responsibility and pull through together instead of shrugging it off and just focusing on partying while the guy dying just by on the beach there just remains out of sight, you know. I don't think it works like that. Anyway, that's my thoughts on that, guys. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Catch you next time. Walking and talking. Phoenix. Thanks.